the Revolutionary Student Union. Today is May Day, a day when workers gather in solidarity with their sisters and their brothers around the world. But what does it mean for Americans to stand in solidarity with the workers of other nations? Just 10 days ago, a group that calls itself, that calls itself Invisible Children organized an event called Cover the Night. Cover the Night builds itself as a grassroots campaign to spread the word about a Ugandan warlord named Joseph Kony who committed atrocities while waging a guerrilla war against the Ugandan government. Waking up the next day to see the streets covered with posters and scribbled chalk messages all demanding that Kony be brought to justice reminded me of some other injustices that have been, <clears throat> that have been inflicted on the people of the African continent. It reminded me of the execution of environmental activist Ken Saro Wiwa yeah. in Nigeria. Yeah at the request of Shell Oil when he spoke out against the displacement of his people by destructive oil drilling practices. Yeah. It reminded me of the Nigerian children who were made blind, deaf, brain damaged, or just plain dead when the American pharmaceutical company Pfizer used Nigerian children as guinea pigs for one of their untested drugs. Yeah. It reminded me of another oil-rich African country. A country which until recently had the highest standard of living in all of Africa. It reminded me of how this country was bombed back into the Stone Age by NATO missiles. It reminded me of how in the same country NATO supported rebels rode the streets singling out black Africans for assault and lynching. I'm speaking of course about Libya. Where, NATO funded, where the NATO-funded civil war has killed 50,000 people and displaced 700,000 more. They don't talk about that! They don't talk about that! No, they don't. It reminds me of the tens of thousands of Somali people who were left dead after the U.S. military intervened and later compelled the Ethiopian government to invade Somalia. It reminded me of the Somali people who were killed for having the nerve to defend their own coast from foreign vessels which dump toxic waste into their waters and destroy their fishing economy. Here in the United States, they call those people pirates. It reminded me of the damage inflicted through economic sanctions upon the people of Zimbabwe for having the audacity to reclaim their land from European settlers who have been brutalizing them for a century. It reminded me of the hundreds of years of theft, enslavement, and genocide inflicted upon Africa by white folks who claim to be bringing civilization to a barbaric continent. And after I've been reminded of all this, I stopped to wonder why no one had produced a slick, emotionally charged movie about any of these atrocities. I wonder why no one had ever covered the night to expose Pfizer or Shell Oil. I wondered why all this, why all this Cody stuff now. Now, after Cody himself has been missing for six years, and the rest of the LRA officers have already begun surrendering. And I learned about the 2.5 billion uh, barrels of oil discovered in Uganda. Prove that, they don't talk about it. I learned about the $1 billion allocated by the U.S. State Department for private military contractors in Africa. Yes, sir. I learned about the 100 U.S. military advisors sent to Africa. A hundred years ago, British novelist Rupert Kipling wrote a poem called The White Man's Burden, in which he urged the United States to continue in the tradition of the British Empire and use its military might to alleviate the, quote, squalor and ignorance of the poor countries of the earth. You're telling the truth on it! Yeah. Of course, neither the British nor the U.S. have ever brought enlightenment or abundance to the nations they have colonized. Yeah. Nor was this ever their intention. Yes, sir. They came to rape. They came to enslave, to steal land and natural resources. Money. Where the empire treads, it does not leave civilization behind it. It leaves yeah. poverty and destruction. Yeah. Workers here in America live on the pen uh, stand on the pedestal created by this robbery of the third girl. That's right! Yeah. Today is May Day. 
International Workers' Day, the day where laborers of every country stand in solidarity with one another. How can the working class of America stand in true solidarity with the workers of the third world? Certainly not by blaming them for the horrible conditions into which imperialism, imperialism has plunged them. We have seen where this kind of patronizing attitude has gotten countries like Libya and Afghanistan. It's time to put down the white man's burden and stand with those who are threatened and oppressed by imperialism. Solidarity with the people of the world. Yeah. 